Hey guys, welcome to an episode of Jonathan's Room. Where Nerdum rules and Normacy drools. So, let's get into today's episode. Imagine, if you will, meeting a person, whether it be a guy, a girl, and falling in love. Mind you, they meet each other on a dating profile website. Which in my eyes, is okay. It's it's fine. It's awesome. But let's get into the story of Danny and Kyle. Two days episode so Danny and Kyle meet up and they start dating they take the usual coffee date the usual bike riding date the usual hiking date whatever they end up falling in love Kyle decides that it's time to take Danny to meet his bosses, Lance and Christian. Danny doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't understand what's going on. Yet. He sits there and he questions Christian and Lance about what they do. What specifically is your job title? And they're kind of, you know, nonchalant about it. They they don't really want to tell him what they do for a specific reason. So, Danny decides to do the smart thing and asks Kyle what's going on. Because Kyle works for Lance and Christian. So, Kyle tells Danny that Lance and Christian are porn site distributors and they work on porn, which is all fine and dandy. And um, Kyle is the one who actually helps upload the porn he does the computer aspect for it because Lance and Christian don't know anything about computers anyway Lance and Christian talk Kyle into doing something that is illegal and Danny finds out about it so Danny talks Kyle into quitting Kyle agrees to quit. That same day, Kyle is sending a text to either Lance or Christian. It doesn't matter at this point. But anyway, he's sending um, a text to one of them telling them that he's going to quit. He sits there and he thinks about it, and he thinks about it, and he thinks about it. He ends up deleting the date, the, the text. That same night was a night that they had planned something. His job was to drug Danny, which he did. Then, he was to let in his boss, Ziz, and a camera crew. He lets them in. 
And they grab Danny. Not in a gentle way. Not in a way that you or I would like to be grabbed. But in a horrific way. So, they take him upstairs, lay him on the bed, get him naked. Christian goes, rapes him. Lance goes, rapes him. Kyle goes and rapes him. And all for what? A little bit of cash. Because they each get paid. And Danny, nonetheless, not knowing what's going on, can't fight for himself because he's been drugged. So, Kyle goes, gets paid, starts talking about this big vacation with Danny. And then, he gets a call from Christian or Lance. And he tells Danny he has to go. Danny tries to chase after him because he forgot his laptop. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know why, Danny decides to take that laptop Open it up. And horrified to see what's been uploaded on the internet. Now, I don't know what happens after that. Because... It goes back to never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I don't know what happens after that. But one can assume from the movie that he finds a handgun and shoots himself in the head. After seeing, after discovering what he has discovered. And we can also assume that Kyle goes and finds Danny. And is feeling kind of sorry for himself, feeling kind of sorry for what he did. So, he calls a crisis hotline. Now, I've actually already accidentally made a mistake of saying that this is a movie, which is called Crisis Hotline, directed by Mark Schwab. The premises of the movie was how I just explained it. But I wanted to get into kind of what it was about so you could understand that this could happen to anybody. It could happen to me. It could happen to you. Could happen to your girlfriend, could happen to your boyfriend. You never know. And this movie kind of took me back to a video I did a couple months back, which was the Kevin Bacon video.
you gotta be careful with people out there. The main character who is talking to Danny slash Kyle, his name was Simon. When we first, or when I first started the movie, Simon was not a character that I related with. Because Simon was going, well, this is an LGBT crisis hotline. I get bored with some of the calls that come in. Which for me, that's not what normally a crisis hotline helper is supposed to say. But then when Danny calls... He gets interested. He gets involved. And that's what makes the character of Simon such a good character. Because even though he started off the movie saying, I'm bored. I don't care about some of these situations. At the end of the movie, he asks the number one question that a Chrysler hotline person has to ask themselves and there's never an answer there's never a yes or no answer to what he asked and that question was did I do enough and in the situation that he was in he had to do enough There wasn't anything more that he could do but to talk to Danny or talk to Kyle, which is the one who actually made the call and was telling the story in Danny's perspective. At the end of the movie, Kyle is the one who gets who commits suicide as well. We never know. What happened to Lance and Christian. But in my mind. It doesn't really matter. Because Lance and Christian were not. Relatively good people. (laughs) You know. Sometimes you choose your profession. And sometimes your profession chooses you. And in this case. They chose their profession. Because they could have said no to raping Danny. All three of them could have said no. But Cash, that for the little word, got in the way. But Kyle's consciousness got to him. He sent all the files that he had. On the porn site operations. And every illegal affair. That Christian and Kyle. Christian and Lance were involved in. To the crisis hotline. So the crisis hotline could give it to the police. Because he knew that the police were going to be on their way. This story could have ended so much differently. If Kyle would have just left. Now, I started at the beginning saying that this could be happen to anybody. And it can What happened to Kevin Bacon in Michigan can happen to anybody. Doesn't matter if you're male, female, transgender. You got to be careful with the people that you associate with.
sometimes I wonder. If, you know, things like a movie or things like real life actually impact people. And I think in this case, in this case, Crisis Hotline, this movie has impacted me. I think... If you were to watch it, you would get thinking about things the way that I've been thinking about things as well. And I'm not saying not to trust people. I'm just saying get to know them. If you don't like what they're doing, then leave. Uh, I'm not saying you can't love a person. I'm just saying sometimes, even if you love that person, some of the situations that you can get yourself into, you can't get out. So sometimes it is better to let that love go. One of the philosophies in my life that I've learned is, is if they truly love you, they'll see the errors of the ways and they'll come back to you. But as far as this episode goes, the point that I wanted to get across is love your spouse, but love yourself a little bit more. If you are interested in this movie, it's called Crisis Hotline. And it is located... I use a free app called um, Tubi. And Tubi is um, an app that has all kinds of shows on it, all kinds of movies... Uh, they have LGBT movies. They have uh, r- regular romance movies, regular action movies. They have old-fashioned TV shows. I've found an old-fashioned Nancy, Nancy Drew show on there, an old-fashioned Hardy Boys show on there. Um, so if you're interested in some old-fashioned cartoons, whatever, Tubi is the channel for you to take a look at it's also um it's also pretty fun so check it out if you have an amazon fire stick all you have to do is go to your apps uh store or your application thing or you can go on to search and go to Tubi, and it'll be there. Like I said, it's totally free. Um, and you can watch the movies that are provided on there, the shows that are provided on there. It's pretty fun. Um, so once again, that's Tubi, T-U-B-I. Um, I have recently just activated another tw- Twitter profile. Um, It is under Jonah32 2020. So you can uh, take a look at that. You can also find me on Jonathan's Room. And you can find me on my own personal web page or Facebook page, Jonathan Rodriguez. As for this episode, I think I am done. Remember, love yourself. So, from Jonathan's room, we're Northern Rules, Enormously Jewels. I'll see you on the next episode.